Men of the 89th. Chapter 2. The lead Shimura halted the convoy, believing he made a wrong turn, and they came up to a small deserted town that wasn't on the map. Cassin voxed back and forth between a command Shimura and the lead Shimura to try and get their position. The whole situation is freaked I tell you. Trooper Galveston speaking under Cassin's conversation. I mean command just lets the regiment get split in half and doesn't even care that the other half is scattered to hell shut up Trooper Galveston. Sergeant Golba speaks up without moving his head. Almost in a routine manner of dealing with Trooper Galveston. The commissar seemed just as distracted with finding the correct route to the town. He didn't hear Trooper Galveston, or rather he learned to tune him out. No it was past the little farm village for about a click then turn right. We went 4 clicks past our turn. It all looks the same out here sir. And our distance gauge is broken. How are we supposed to accurately determine distance the conversation continued for a while. Even as the convoy continued to move in what seemed to be the right direction. Cassin sunk into his seat next to the commissar. The Goban desert was a miserable place to be. But the inside of the Chimera wasn't any better. The troopers were sweating profusely and the cabin began to stink something awful to the commissar. The others didn't seem to mind. Some time would pass as the convoy made its way through the harsh terrain. Vox chatter seemed quiet for the time being, and the Lechimera reported seeing a town up ahead. Cassin ordered the convoy to slow down as it got closer to the town. Okay, this area should be crawling with orcs, so stay sharp and get ready to move in on foot if need be. He moved his hand from the side of his helmet and turned to the commissar. You know, I never caught your name. Oh I'm commissar I a loud explosion rang out at the Chimera tossed violently to an impact to its hull. Keep moving. Get up on the guns. Give me a report what's going on out there a few more explosions rang out, nearly impacting a Chimera. The Chimeras started to rush forward into the little town. Last fire shot out from all sides of the Chimeras as they engaged the orc targets. Their crude weapons firing at the Chimeras and exploding on impact doing very little damage to the people inside, but harming the old vehicles. They split off into many directions mowing down the orcs that charged out of the town for them. Cassin's Chimera took another shot to the side, only this time it broke the tread immobilizing the tractor. The orcs saw the Chimera lurch to a halt and began to focus their fire on it. The small bullets ricocheting off, but making exiting not an option, unless they wanted to be cut down as they left. More on the right trooper Harold shouted as he began melts away an orc's face. They fought them off for as long as they could even with supporting Chimera as the orcs eventually got to them and started smashing the armor with their crude weapons. The rear hatch started to shake like they were trying to rip it off. Men prepare to defend yourselves. The commissar readied his lus pistol and pointed it at the door. They all turned their attention to the rear hatch as it was getting pulled off the chimera violently. Some of the troopers affixed their bayonets. It final flew open, and the first green thing they saw, vaporized. When the others tried to rush in, they were met with the same results. Trooper Harold was counting his kills aloud. The other chimeras were having much better success. Some of them had even halted, and the troopers fallen out to engage the orcs in the town, clearing it out building by building. Sergeant Corbin leading them. Corbin led his platoon into the town trying to find the orcs with the rockets that were disabling the chimeras. His first squad ran up the middle, as second and third took to the flanks. As expected his squad was getting suppressed by orcs who actually aimed their weapons at them. His squad would pop their heads up every so often to take a pot shot at their position. But what they were really doing is acting as a diversion so the other squads could flank behind the gunners positions. Corbin was issuing orders, and relaying information back to his squads in a manner that almost seemed as if he wasn't in a firefight. Despite the fact his cover was getting chipped away, second squad rounded a corner when an explosion engulfed a couple of troopers. The next trooper slowly took to the corner, and looked around it to see an orc with a large rocket launcher in his hand. The sergeant relayed the information back to Corbin. That's why we don't rush out in close quarters, who got hit just a couple of rookies so Corbin didn't like losing a single man. But he felt slightly reassured that one of the vets didn't get hit. Least they can teach the recruits. A window behind Corbin's position burst open and an orc with a large gun appeared and pointed it at his squad. He leveled his rifle and began to lay down a suppressive volley. The orc ducked out of the way, unnaturally so for its brutish kind. Lay down suppressive fire on that window, his hand was holding a frag grenade. His squad did as they were ordered and the orc stayed out of the window long enough for him to nonchalantly walk up to the building and lob the grenade into the window. Then walk back to his cover as it detonated. All they heard from the window before the blast was a bunch of guttural grunts. They assumed more orcs would be showing up. Hey Sarge. 
Why aren't these orcs charging us a trooper called out maybe all the ones that like to hit things ran out of the town when we showed up amazing I love when our incompetence works in out favor. Another chinra was immobilized and was swarmed in the same manner as Cassins. Once the door was ripped off, the troopers inside held off the best they could. Several orcs were cut down, bit one charged in with a stick bomb in hand as it was killed, barely reaching the doorway. The subsequent blast disintegrated the closest trooper, spreading his remains all over the troop compartment. The disoriented trooper slowly fell out of the chimera, as they did one of them took a bullet to the leg. The others returned fire and tried to hold off the orcs. Cassin's chimera fared far better, and the orcs seemed to ignore his chimera. His squad fell out of the chimera and tried to make for the town. The harsh rocky and war-torn landscape was tough enough to cross, let alone the addition to the orcs making it even harder. The distance from the chimera to the nearest cover was only a short distance away, but it would feel like a marathon as Cassin's squad rushed to a nearby rocky outcrop. Troopers Galveston and Harold carried with them a heavy bolter and hastily began to set it up as the rest were laying down fire. They troopers seemed to forget about the searing heat that Gobin offered them. Their only concern was survival. Once the heavy bolter was set up Galveston began to fire on the orcs nearby, almost instantly drawing all the attention. They all jumped from their thrashing and yelling to let out a war cry as they began to charge the captain and his troopers. Frackin hell. 5th platoon, we kicked the hornet's nest, we need some heavy lass fire on these ugly bastards roger captain. We're moving into support, a couple of chimeras changed their course and plowed through a few orcs to engage the newly formed horde charging the heavy bolter position. Their engines coughed and sputted as the drivers agitated the ancient engines, driving them as fast as they could. Inside the town Corbin's platoon was still engaged but was quickly finishing off the remaining orc forces in the town. He was voxing back to the captain that the town was nearly secure, as his troopers dropped the few remaining orcs, and the anti-armor orcs Cassin barked into the vox barely heard over the bolt of fire. They fled towards the main objective, they ran Cassin was more impressed than surprised. I thought it was strange too, so Cassin ordered what remaining units available to head into the town to lock it down before the inevitable counter-attack. But before he could send everyone there was still a good 20 orcs trying to kill him. I'm out get me another belt Galveston yelled at Harold it's your turn anyway trooper Harold bolted across the open desert back to the chimera. Ducking and dodging gunfire as he made his 50 meter sprint. The sound of bullets pinging and bouncing off the hull distracting him momentarily as he tossed items about in the chimera looking for another ammo box. He reached behind a bench to grab the heavy box of the many rocket shells. As he turned to leave the light of the doorway was blocked. Before his eyes could adjust to the silhouette of the new person he felt a strong bunt force to his gut, knocking him to the back of the chimera. An orc had broken off from the group looking to get an easy kill. Fortunately for Harold his comrades noticed this as well, but unfortunately they weren't in a position to move to assist. The orc slowly lumbered into the troop compartment yelling and becoming frustrated at the confined space. Harold was slowly regaining his composure, his hand started reaching towards his last rifle. The orc fought and struggled to get an arm free to take another swing at the disoriented trooper. As it fought to move comfortably it got its arm with its crude and blunt axe free and ready to swing down on the young man. As it made its lunge Harold grabbed his last rifle and jabbed it into the orc's mouth. Before the monster had time to react Hull let loose a barrage that splattered the orc's brain matter on the roof of the cabin. That's 12. I want all available chimeras to move into the town and take up defensive positions. 5th platoon, you're babysitting today. First, gather all the supplies from the down chimeras. Thrid, keep sweeping the town and start digging in. They'll know we're here soon enough Cassin dropped closed the vox channel and held his hand over a wound in his side. I'll live, now get the ammo and supplies from the wrecks he urged his squad to move. The commissar urged Cassin to sit and let one of the medics see to his wound. The captain reply was to produce a bandage from his aid kit and start wrapping it around his waist. He told the commissar that he had worse and that other troopers needed to get help before him. The remaining chimeras pulled into the small town and started to set up along the roads and major entry points. With 3rd and 5th platoons setting up it would take a force at least 10 times the size they had just fought to retake the small town. 1st platoon was filing into the town and beginning to set up a small ammo cache. Once we beat back this counter attack, this town will be our rally point for objective alpha. If we need to we'll fall back and resupply here. 5th platoon, like I said, you're on babysitting detail, you'll stay back and protect the armor. Don't let me down today Delta Company, we've kicked this much ass already the commissar was impressed with the captain. Mainly because his job of having to uplift the men's morale was half done by the captain. 
All he needed to do was make sure none of them wanted to flee, but their resolve and confidence in Cassin, they felt in good hands. He'd gotten most of them through worse, he would get them through this day. Cassin walked over to Sergeant Corbin as he was doing some last minute checks of his line. Before Corbin could comment on Cassin's wound, the captain raised his hand. Corbin wouldn't bring it up. You think they'll come at us from the northwest I believe so sir, that's where most of the attacks came from in the past. Cassin turned to face the open land to the northwest and nodded. He mused at the thought of a large orc leading the Xenos in the immediate area. He hoped that when they linked up with 2nd and 6th platoon they would be able to draw the chieftain out of hiding. Some of the troopers grew impatient waiting for the attack to come. They put down their weapons and a few pulled out tarot decks. Others passed LHO sticks back and forth as a ritual of good fortune. As the commissar walked through the ranks he became upset at the trooper's sudden lack of discipline. He pulled one trooper aside and began to scold him for his lack of bearing when he refused to salute the commissar as he passed. The morale officer began to lose his temper as the trooper mouthed something under his breath at the commissar. Insolence. Just because you beat the emperor's enemies once in a day doesn't give you the right to be lax in the presence of an officer his hand raised as if it was about to smack the trooper. Just before his hand fell Cassian caught the commissar in time. Commissar. What's the meaning of this he walked as quickly as he could without limping towards the angry man. This trooper showed great disrespect towards a superior officer and continued his misconduct when I began to reprimand him. Is this true trooper? The man averted his gaze from Cassin slightly while nodding and speaking softly yes sir. Trooper give me your ration. You won't eat today. You know better than to act like an orc. You're a guardsman. Act like one. The trooper reluctantly reached into his rucksack and pulled out his meal, handing it over to his captain. The commissar was upset over being interrupted and having his punishment usurped, but Cassin led him away from the guardsman quickly defusing the situation. What was the meaning of that? I was well within my rights to he was interrupted. Sir, with all due respect, if you hit them, they hate you. If they hate you they won't listen to you. Cassin continued preventing the commissar from getting another word in. If you make them feel foolish for acting out, they won't lash out at you and understand they made a mistake. They will respect you for that later on. Beating only makes them weaker. So deal with the situation with a level head. I have my authority to punish these troopers as I see fit to maintain order. I was trained specifically for the matter. Next time I suggest you do not interfere lest you wind up in one of my reports as well. His words harsh. But hiding the fact that he thought the captain's advice was useful and took it to heart. He would never admit it. After the ordeal with the commissar was over the troopers went back to relaxing. But were slightly less uninhibited than before. The reprimanded trooper quickly left before he would be teased by the others. The warp was that about? Does the captain normally tell commissars what to do? Trooper Jellahan addressed the group as she pulled a tarot card from the deck and put it in her hand. Not normally, but he's been known to speak his mind to superiors. It gets him in trouble a bit. Kinda why the colonel isn't too worried that he's stranded out here and not his frack buddy Major Igris, who she placed a card down and exchanged it with a new one. She's the commander of Alpha Company, and always seen sucking up to Colonel Tillman. He laughed trying to keep the LHO in his mouth. Almost an hour would pass, and still no sign of the orcs counterattack. This made Cassin uneasy, though the distant thunder of a battle raged off in the distance. The adjacent town where the cut-off platoons were at was under siege from the orcs. Cassin and Sergeant Corbin were watching from the rooftops as the battle raged. It seemed the orcs had heard about their scuffle and instead attacked the town they had been for some time now. Each explosion sent a shiver down the captain's spine, each flash he imagined another trooper perishing. They had been cut off for nearly a month now, all he knew they could be down to handful and they could be getting finished off as they sat there and watched. You think they are still in there Corbin spoke in a monotone I just know it. Henry's is too stubborn to die, and Kayla can't get lucky enough to die, he tried to reassure himself. Cassin told Corbin to assemble his platoon and be ready to move out. He voxed the other platoons to mount up. The battle plan was simple, ride up to the town, dismount and fight through the orcs to get to the stranded troopers. He'd leave a few chimeras on standby near the outskirts to transport the wounded and make supply runs. They had no intel on the town or the orcs strength. He joked about how it made it simple since they didn't have to worry about that. The troopers hustled towards the chimeras and gathered all they needed for the fight leaving the heavy and needed equipment behind. First and third platoons would move towards the town. The members of the fifth platoon silently complained about missing out on the fight. 
Much to Cassim's liking he managed to dump Swecker on 5th platoon, making his task seem somehow glorious when really he just didn't want the noble getting in his way. He had a medic look at his wound as he took his seat. Many of the troopers kissed religious icons, or muttered a silent prayer as the convoy rolled out towards the fight. The vox chatter bounced back and forth between the transports as they closed a gap between towns. Roughly 60 troopers were on their way to reinforce the town, but the return trip would be painful as they brought only enough chimeras to hold those going in. Some of the troopers morbidly joked about how there won't be as many coming back so it all worked out. Distance to town approx 1 km roger that 3 maintaining dispersion. Though they'd been through many battles the troopers still had to psyche themselves out for a battle from time to time. Some joked, others prayed. Corbin was steady as a rock. Others were jealous of him, but he would say that he was jealous of them, to care enough to be scared anymore. Corbin could have gotten a commission and retired on some backwards planet, even tried once. He knew he'd be stuck in the guard till he died. 400 meters, Roger 3, slowing down for dismount in 30, the hissing of the Vox tuning in and out somehow calmed Cassin down. It gave him a sense of order in the chaos. He was worrying over what he'd find in the town as soon as they got there. He could hear explosions nearby and was amazed that none of the orcs decided to charge at them. We have to have been spotted he thought. Say commissar, how about after this battle you can tell me your name. Cassin smiled jokingly at the man in the pointed hat captain. I really hope this doesn't become a common occurrence. 150 meters. Halt. Halt. Halt Roger 3. Halting column. Dismounting. The tread screeched as the metal beats came to a stop. The large metal ramps opened and all the troopers poured out of the backs and surrounded the chimeras. They rushed towards the town that was up just a small hill. The fighting was all around them. The town was in complete ruin. The streets vanished under the rubble of the stucco buildings, and the concrete of the nicer ones. As dilapidated as they were, they were still getting blown apart by orc rockets and grenades. As Cassin's force got closer to the town they came up to the rear of a good throng of orcs shooting at the guardsmen inside, oblivious to the large force behind them. The orcs were quickly killed in the blitz, and the guardsmen started to fight their way towards the center of the town with was heavily fortified by this point. This is Captain Cassin with 1st and 3rd platoons. Can anyone read me static I say again this is Captain Cassin. Is anyone able to respond? Reinforcements are approaching from the south more static. Cassin was about to give up hope of reaching his officers, until a boisterous and familiar voice chimed in. Holy frackin' shit. Caleb I fracking love you. You have no idea how happy I am to hear your dull voice or voice muffled under heavy gunfire. It's good to hear you too Kayla. We are approaching from the south. Can you give me a citrup on the orc forces? Yeah they are well situated in the west end. Shit the line went dead. Cassin swore and ordered his men to continue to push into the town. His men went from house to house clearing the orcs from their firing positions, they still seemed unaware that they were kin the town, until bullets impacted the wall in front of him. He didn't need to turn around to know they had been encircled. Before he could yell to get men out of the open the rest of the orcs opened up on his position, killing a couple men around him, and wounding men and others. They quickly refaced and started engaging the new enemies. Coburn took to charging up the middle with his platoon trying to quickly clear the distance to where their friends were holed up. Corbin would have to constantly remind his troopers to not get caught up in the moment and to proceed carefully. Some of his men were hit already, and with their exit blocked he couldn't get his men to the makeshift aid station back at the other town. Harrell was manning the heavy bolter this time, continuing his count from earlier as he turned the green orcs to red clouds. The orcs were growing annoyed at his presence and started lobbing stick bombs at him, every time falling just a bit short to do any major damage. Sorry about that Caleb, green and ugly thought he could sneak up on me. Ok here's the skinny, we have demolition charges set up on the eastern and western approaches, but they are our last charges, so we need to funnel as many of them into those approaches as possible. If you can clear out the south and dig in, I think we might an explosion erupted the orcs to those approaches. Cassin's men fought hard taking a few more wounds every now and then. The orcs occasionally getting close enough to get into hand to hand. Trooper Jellahan was asking for another charge pack as an orc cleared her cover and landed its axe square in her left arm, and almost renders completely off as it pulled back. The orc was met with several volleys of LAS rifle before it fell over. Just another core in the fight. A few troopers rushed to Jellahan's aid to try and stop the bleeding and to stabilize the hysterical trooper. Second squad first platoon. We are taking too many casualties. So I'm down three men. Two critically wounded. Stand your ground. We can't get combat evics until the south road is clear. 
Cassin took in a deep breath. Third squad, flank around to the left of the aliens. Try and open a corridor for our chimeras. Yes a third squad made their way through the rubble and managed to find a pocket where the orcs weren't shooting at. The sergeant ordered his men to take out what frag grenades out, and to get ready for a volley. As soon as the grenades were in the air, his squad popped up and laid down a thick blanket of laser and bolt of fire. The explosions claimed many orcs, and those left alive and confused were cut down in the crossfire. Making use of his initiator's squad charge to secure a small crossing which the chimeras could pass through. As soon as the sergeant and a few of his men leapt from their cover, an orc gunner unleashed a furious barrage of lead onto them, sinking many bullets into the sergeant's body killing him, and seriously wounding more. The Vox trooper panicked and voxed in a hasty report. Third squad is down. We lost the sergeant and half our men are on the ground. In reality only 3 men died, leaving enough for a small fire team to try and clear out the gunner. One of the corporals quickly took command of the squad and tossed a smoke grenade in front of the building with the gunner in it. As the smoke filled she ordered a couple men to go around and breach the building while the others tried to suppress. The two troopers stormed the building and started blasting away at a couple orcs in the ruins. Quickly getting into hand to hand. One trooper plunged his knife into the gut on an orc, stunning it for a fraction of a second for the other to put a new hole in its head. The other was shot by the other trooper as it charged the second. Both looked at each other and nodded. The corporal watched the building anxiously until she saw the room with the gunner light up and a trooper appeared in the window and gave a thumbs up. Before the victorious trooper could move the window was lit up, and he took a couple hits to the flak armor, knocking him down, but only stunning him. The fracking armor works he was pleasantly surprised. This is Corporal Hershen of 3rd squad. Corridor is secure. Roger that Corporal Cassin's morale was lifted as rounds impacted all around him. This is Captain Cassin to armored elements. The door is open. Bring in the mercy wagons. He let out a relived sigh. The order went out to begin moving the wounded towards the evac point. He ordered for another squad to go and hold the corridor. Kayla obliged him with a one of her Cass Reckon squads. Several wounded were piled into each chimera as it showed up. All the available medics were at the chimeras taking turns on trips back to the rally point. Cassin was growing worried at the number of wounded going back. He called for a status report on his remaining forces. Two squads didn't report back and every squad had at least one dead and two wounded. Though it seemed the plan was working and more and more orcs were abandoning the southern approach in favor of the east and west. Just a bit longer, they'll send in their main force down the main roads and we'll blow em hell Kayla almost cheered over the vox they'll know not to mess with Kayla's cas reckons. Back at the rally point the wounded started to flood in. All the troopers that were sitting idle became overwhelmed with tasks to do to help. Some of the more anxious ones suddenly were glad they were not in the town. The medics and apothecaries were busy yelling at the troopers to fetch equipment and medicines. They rushed many of the critical patients into a dirty operating room, but it was all they had. Some of the wounded would stabilize in time, but there were quite a few that would die soon if they were not treated. Sadly they wouldn't be able to save all of them. The chimeras continued their rotation back and forth constantly sending more wounded back each time. The battle continued to rage in the distance. Corbin's squad was the first to actually link up with the other forces and he joined the defense in the buildings they were in. Both platoons had suffered only a few causalities in the time they were separated, much to his surprise, but both were Cass Reckon platoons as well. Just as planned the orcs started committing their whole forces to those two points and Cassin was free to move to intercept as he pleased. Get ready to blow the charges on my mark, wait for it. The orcs stampeded through the streets shooting wildly and screaming, almost trampling each other and they charged. Mark them they disappeared. The town was showered in a bloody rain of orc body parts and entrails. Many of the troopers fought back a gag reflex, others rejoiced in so many of the foul Zenos being killed. Whatever their reaction, a general consensus of relief was felt amongst everyone. A few pockets of resistance remained, and were quickly rooted out. Everyone began to converge at the town square. After a quick tally of the remaining forces was done, Cassin decided to exchange some pleasantries with his old friends. As everyone let their guard down for a moment they heard a loud rumbling in some of the debris. A large lone orc was charging the square. You think you can kill smart boys the alien spoke hardly understandable with its guttural grunts and growls. It'll show you the men in of a proper fight everyone was taken a back at the orc's foolhardiness. This was a larger orc than the rest. It was the chieftain that Cassin was looking for, though he didn't know it at the time. While the Xeno was making its boats in the middle of the square everyone quickly leveled their weapons at the monsters and after a quick volley of last fire the beast was gone. 
That was the dumbest thing I have ever seen. Sergeant Golba spoke confused you see that kind of crap in a bad holodrama. Or picked a game. A few troopers around him started nodding and carrying on in conversation. After the battle was over the officers convened in one of the few remaining standing structures. Cassin briefed Kayla and Henris on the abandoning of the base a day earlier, and their mission to recover all the scattered elements of Delta Company, as well as to link up with Beta Company a few days from now to retake the Goban Desert capital. After the briefing Cassin ordered for the town to be emptied and everything and everyone to fall back to the rally point. The crowded chimeras traveled back to the town where a sparing night's rest was the only reward for the weary troopers. The planet's sun was fading quickly into the distance. Many of the troopers began to kick back and relax, enjoying the reward of getting to live another day. Some sang and danced, others found alcohol, and a handful found the company of another trooper as a means to wash away the stress of the battle. The commissar decided to stay out of the jubilation, not because he wanted to, but because he knew it would be futile. Cassin wasn't always one to celebrate every victory, but he felt like letting his hair down and relaxing with his friends. He walked through the hallway of a building looking for Henris and Kayla, with a battle of Amasik in his hand, glasses in the other. He knocked then slowly opened the door to the room the officers were staying in. Henris was fast asleep in the bed, and Kayla was sitting at the edge of it wearing her tank top and a pair of shorts. He had almost forgotten about her augmentations. Kayla wasn't known for her luck, she had both her legs blown off by a mine when she was younger, and lost her right arm a few years later. All replaced with bionics, earning her the nickname Clumsy Kayla, or Cog Girl. Many guardsmen carried scars with them, or saw their fair share of the hell of war. She just would always get the short end of the stick in almost every situation. It was a shame too. Cassin always thought she had a pretty face. Is this a bad time Cassin spoke softly now come on in. How have you been Caleb? She stood up and walked over to a nearby table where Cassin was heading. Aside from the hole in my side, many dead troopers. Being disconnected from the regiment with no chance of a resupply? Pretty frackin' good. He chuckled, pouring a glass for himself and Kayla. But that business as usual, isn't it? She took a sip. So tell me, what's next for the company? Running around the desert saving the innocent civilians? Trying to make this world a better place? Oh where will the great hero Caleb take us next? Her tone playfully sarcastic. We're going to head northeast to rescue Vec. The bastard is still alive. Her tone changed immediately. Yep. Kayla snatched the bottle from the table and took a large swig. I don't know about you, but I just fucking loved it, the way they handled that orc chief and like, you know, just turned him into lead mist with mass volley fire. Like, if that doesn't sum up guardsmen, I, I don't know what will. You know what I mean? Like, honestly. And uh, like even that bit where, the, you know, the orc was coming up and then he shoves his gas rifle into its mouth and then, oh fucking love that shit. You know what I mean? Um, It's a bit unusual doing, like, you know, a more serious... Like, you know, series, like, you know, there's not, it's not that big. It's nowhere near as big as any of the other series. Like, you know, as I said before, there's only, like, six parts. So, look, I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'm going to try and hammer this series out as fast as I can. You know what I mean? Just because, like, you know, I feel, you know, I don't like to get bogged down. Like, you know, you're doing the series, and then, what do you know, you're do you're still doing it, like, three months later. You know what I mean? But, hey, look, um, try and get this out to you, and then I want to continue on with cold shoulder and all that other stuff so like as always i hope you guys have enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video if you haven't already check out my red bubble portfolio you might just find something you like this this is, is not okay this needs to stop now this is cancer this this is so much cancer that i can feel the tumors growing on my back and it's way down heavy on me and it's not okay can you help a nigga out and just stop this, please?